Una Emery has transformed Aston Villa, turning them into one of the best teams in England. Therefore, he is left to join Spain as their new head coach. So that means HRS is Villa's new manager with the goal to do better than Emery and ultimately turn them into the world's best team. So to do this, Aston Villa need to win the UEFA Champions League. And we kicked off episode one by selling a few players who we just weren't going to use. And we made our very first signing from Dortmund. It is the striker Macau Cam. We brought him into the club for 22 million pounds. And he has really improved the depth on the bench. And especially if Ollie Watkins gets injured. And after this signing, we are left with 77 million. So we can definitely make even more signings. And we will, because you guys got some really good suggestions in the comments of episode one. We kicked off our first game of the season versus Newcastle. And we beat them 4-2. Then we had Everton at home and beat them 1-0. And then got a 1-1 draw to Burnley. So, so far, we've actually done all right. And we're currently sitting sixth in the Premier League. Of course, our expectations for the season are to finish top eight in the Premier League and to win the Conference League. Which the group stage, you guys already know. But this seems to be slightly different than real life. We're playing AZ Altmar, La Guia, whoever they are, and Sao Vigo, the Spanish side. So yeah, we should be smashing this group. And with how this squad is currently, I feel we could probably finish better than top eight. And we will make a few more signings as well. Hopefully we don't lose anyone with injury or then wanting to leave club. But as I said, you guys got so many good suggestions in the comments of episode one. With a budget close to 80 million, we can definitely make improvements here. Make signings. The bench is strong. The starting 11, the defense, midfield and attack. Of course, if you guys are enjoying this series so far, smash it a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. Turn the bell on. Currently, we have three left backs at the club. Well, basically two. We have Lucas Digne and we have Moreno, the Spanish left back. Both 30 years old, both basically 80 overall, no potential. I feel we sell one of them. I'm probably going to lean more towards selling Moreno. Actually, no, I say that. I take a look at their stats. He is higher rated and he has 87 pace. Where Digne has 76, they have the same defending. Yeah, I think Moreno is probably the better player. But I saw great suggestions. Like, why don't you sign Mark Kukure? This guy was amazing at Brighton. Chelsea signed him, and well, we, we know what Chelsea are like at the moment. And he really hasn't been good there. So we could potentially revive his career. It's a little bit of a risk signing, though. Starts at 80, only a potential of 83. Better going forward than he is defensively. He's 25, so he's young-ish. It'd be a decent signing. Now, this would be a very hard signing to do. Let's actually go to Brighton and try and sign their left back. Again, 25. This time, it's a stupid young. This guy's probably got more potential than Kukurea. Starts off around 60. 78, I think, would be a great left back. But Bryden, quite literally, in the same position as Villa, would be a very hard club to sign a player from without spending lots of money. Negotiating with them really isn't easy. Take a look at, for example, Caicedo when Chelsea signed him. They paid like 116 million for him. Therefore, we should go in for someone who's a little bit easier to sign. This is still a hard signing because it's a Premier League club and it's Man United. But they really do suck at selling players, so we could get him for a very good price. I don't know why this guy looks so bulky and his head looks so small. But Luke Shaw would be a great signing. He's 28. He's around 82 overall. England international, of course. And I feel he'd really add some strength to this left back position. Moreno would be a great backup, but he'd slip straight into there. And this defense, honestly, would be one of the best defenses in the league. Definitely top eight. And that's where we want to finish. And don't forget Martinez. We haven't said too much about this guy so far. But we want to do all we can to keep this guy. Of course, this guy is a World Cup winner. But if we want to make a sign we're going to have to act quick because it's deadline day. Now I bring Lucas Digne to my office saying, Lucas, I'm thinking about bringing in a brand new left back. Therefore, you or Marino need to leave. I've decided that it's going to be you. I am looking at a bunch of left backs and I might try and add you to the deal. So the chances are you will be going to a Premier League side. But if I can't do that, any offer that comes in for you, I'm going to have to accept. He replies by saying, boss, I've gotta say, I'm upset about hearing this. I am happy here at Villa, but if you have to sell me, please keep me in the Premier League. The three left backs on the list are from the Premier League currently. If we add him to the deal, I feel they would accept it. So to go outside the Premier League, we could possibly look at Jose Gaia from Valencia. 26 to 33 million. 28, 82 overall. So around the same age, by the exact same age as Luke Shaw and overall. And this guy's stats look pretty good. 78 deep 
defending, 78 dribbling, 81 pace. To be fair, probably the same stats wise as Luke Shaw. But here's 5 a and Luke Shaw's 5 11. I'm going to put an offer in for Luke Shaw. And to be fair, we don't have his scout report. So has he got a downgrade? Has he gone below 82 overall? If we go to player swaps, go to four bat, look at Dinier, he's worth 13 million. If we offer that, plus maybe. 15 million and a 5 cent salon clause because I feel 15 million would be a little bit too low maybe. 17 million. Okay, 16 million and we'll make the salon clause 3%. Let's see them accept that and they do. Question is, do we negotiate this contract? Sign Luke Shaw up. Dinye, you could say gets an upgrade by going to United. Or do we put an offer in for someone else? To be fair, the benefit of signing Kukurea or Stupin Young is they have more potential and they're slightly younger. But we've agreed this deal with Luke Shaw, so we might as well just sign him up. From his performances for England and United, we've seen that he's a very good left back. And I do feel this is the right signing to make. Wage-wise, let's just put him on 80k a week. And that is our second signing of this series. Luke Shaw is officially an Aston Villa player. And there he is in the starting 11. He is 82 overall. And take a look at his stats. 81 defending. So we could play him as a center back. He can play that. But we have too many center backs. In fact, he gets more of a boost rating at center back than left back. That, that's interesting. 82 passing. So he's a very good player on the ball. 79 dribbling. He's not slow. Good physically. Again, I think we've made a very good signing here. And the good thing is we have 60 million left to spend. We could go and sign another player, but I'm just going to leave it to January. That will be next episode. So get all your suggestions in the comments. And now now we can skip over deadline day. No players going out. No more players coming in. But we haven't yet spoke with our new signing. So I bring Luke Shaw to my office. Saying, Luke, welcome to Aston Villa. Standards are high here. We have big expectations for this season. I thought I needed a better left back. Therefore, I signed you. And I feel you're the right man to come in and make that defense even stronger. He replies saying, boss, thank you for the welcome. And thank you for signing me. It's great to go from one of the biggest clubs in England to another. One of the reasons I signed is I feel this season Villa are going to do very, very well. I do want to ask though, the back of left back Marino, how much competition will he be to me? I respond saying, look, you are the main left back, but if your form does drop, then Marino will come in. But with the cup games, rotation will be happening anyway. And Luke responds saying, good to hear, excited to start the first match. And that first match is actually against Liverpool. So this is no easy challenge. And so far undefeated, of course. And we have been lining up like this. Of course, Luke's sure the man to come in now. But I will make one change. I will start Leon Bailey on the left-hand side for Zaniola. Just fitness reasons. But if we could get a point from this game, that would be massive. Oh, Luke Shaw. First touch on the ball. He made a good pass. Yeah, this guy does have good passing and we should be confident with him playing out the back. I mean, so far, this is a very, very good spell on the ball. I mean, he's, he's, he's dribbling through everyone at this point. He passes out wide to Leon Bailey. We've got options in the box. This is a, a quite a confident start, got to say. It's, it's got a good crossing in the box as well. It's going to put a ball back post. Nope. That is a good ball, but Liverpool deal with that. So far, both sides going at it. Ball's loose in the box. Nice save, Martinez. Another ball in the box there. That is a very good clearance. Luke Shaw trying to get it out the box there. Still not gone. The shot. Oh, you're joking. Darwin Nunes makes it 1-0. That is not a goal anyone wants to concede. Well, no one wants to concede a goal, but that is a very tacky goal. How has the keeper not saved that? That is my question. So we now need to get back in it. That is a nice ball to Leon Bailey. Now Watkins. This guy loves playing against Liverpool. Watkins, what a save, Allison! Short from a corner. You guys know how good we are when we go short from the corner. Wait for that runner back post. Watkins is there. Whip it in. Couldn't really get ahead on it. Maybe head of that to Watkins. Takes it down. Oh, what a goal. That's the equalizer. It's the main man, Oli Watkins. The guy in the back of my shirt gets the equalizer. And that is a fantastic finish. Fantastic assist. In fact, I didn't realize that was so top corner. And the way he took the ball down and turned was so hard. That is a fantastic goal. Here come Liverpool. Darwin nope. Nunes. What a tackle, Peo Torres. You know, we have such a strong defense. He's going to get a ball out wide there for Bailey. This is a nice counterattack. Can he beat Van Dyke onto that right foot? He is left footed. We can get that out wide there for McGinn. Now to short. He's going to get this one in the box. Nice ball. Diaby, can he finish it? What a save. What a ball from Luke Shaw. Tell you what, that was a save and a half as well from Allison. We go short to Tielemans. 
We get this one in the box. That's a great ball, Kamara. Oh, the accuracy wasn't there, man. We should have scored that. So 1-1 one, one at half time. But if we take a look at the performance stats, our two best players, Watkins, of course, the goal scorer, Luke Shaw, 7.5. So far, a very good debut. Here is Tielemans on the ball. Diaby making a run. Now, this guy has 95 pace. He can definitely get to the goal here. Can he finish it, though? On his left, what a save, Alisson. He is the best keeper in the world. Oh, look at this run from Matty Cash. He's doing very well. Watkins, he needs to find a better position than that. His movement can just not be that good sometimes. That is a, a great Denied. stop. Allison's on it. How have we not scored there? To be fair, we're having more of the ball than Liverpool. We're attacking more and we look like the team to score the next goal. Here's Cash. He's going to get this in the box. Here's Watkins. Chips the keeper. No, I thought that was the best option. You guys must think I always want to chip the ball. I just keep failing. Oh, that's a nice tackle there, McGinn. That could be a game winner if we score this goal here. McGinn making the run. Oh, they get the block. Watkins takes it down. Still got the ball. Gets it in the box. Diaby! It's got the winner. Surely now that's a Villa win. Three points in the bag. What a way to end this game and win it. Anfield is stunned. We win the ball in midfield. Watkins plays it back. That's a great assist. And that is a fantastic finish by Diaby. His finishing could be a whole lot better. We have seen that, especially when he's on the wing. But that was fantastic, and it's won us the game. If that with that, our scout reports back now for Kukure and Estupion. He's 81 overall. He would have been a very good signing. He would have been higher rated than Shaw at some point. Kukure, 80 overall. But you know what? Shaw showed in his debut that he is a very good player. And again, I, th I think we've made the right signing. Question is for January, though. Where do we make a signing? I think Zaniolo has kind of lost his place in this. I don't know why he has zero sharpness. I don't know what this is, but Bailey seems to be doing better on the left-hand side. We're going to have to put a training plan on this guy. Training focus. That's what I put for players on the bench. We now have Palace at home. First game, we're going to sim and Bruh. it's a draw. This really is a game where I'd expect to win. Watkins scores. And by the appearances, he now has four goals, two assists. So he very much so is our main man. But Diaby isn't that far behind. Three goals, one assist. We now have our first game in the conference league. This is easy out, Mar, and this is our fully rotated side or as well as we can and it is very strong in fact the side filler would be put out in the premier league two three years ago was probably about as good as this so we're simming this away from home fully expecting a win three now there we go mcginn buende and mccall cow his first start in the 11 and he scores and i do have a conversation with him after that saying mccall cow i was very impressed last game i feel i can really trust you with rotating Watkins, and you can score goals the more you score when you're played the more chances you have of playing in the bigger games he replied saying boss i appreciate that you saw how well i played it felt great to get my first goal and one of the reasons i signed for villa is i knew i had to work hard to get a spot in the side but another big challenge now we're at stanford bridge playing chelsea we could say we're in a whole lot better form and every crew mode we seem to do these guys are like mid-table here's mudrick on the left hand side they're number 10 whipped nope. in not a bad ball that is a header very opportunistic yeah, not a chance that was going in. Here we have Bailey out wide. Oh, look at this run there from Luke Shaw on the left-hand side. We could play across into the box there. If he keeps that run, hits the Abbey, pulls it back on that left, shoots. Oh, what a save. Okay, short from the corner. Tillemans. We need more back post runs like that. Yes, ball whipped in. We win the header. Oh, the accuracy, man. If that's on target, chances are we score. I really do fancy ourselves to not lose this game. Nope. That's a nice tackle there, Luke Shaw. Oh, no, couldn't get it away. But that is a dreadful finish. What do you expect? This guy's a CDM. Oh, chance, Chelsea. What a save, Martinez. Ten minutes to play now. We counterattack. Tillemans coming forward. There's a pass to be played. That is wild class. That is absolutely astonishing. That is fantastic. We've got McGinn on the ball here. Watkins making a run. We play a beautiful pass to Diaby. Surely the winner. He's done it again. We, had, we do have six minutes, seven minutes left to play. But he has possibly done it again. A late winner for Villa. Diaby, this guy's finishing. Unless it's a late winner, it's terrible. But if it's a late winner, it's amazing. That is a fantastic finish in the bottom corner. We are winning. We need to hold on now. Defend. Play this out. Get the three points. Here comes Pepe in the box. Oh, he could make a pass. He plays it to this dude. It's Nkunku. 
Back in the box. This is Jackson. No, the block. No, no, no. You're joking. Are you having a laugh? Look at them going mad. The whole stadium goes mad about an equalizer. 10th FC. Mid-table FC. Spend a billion FC to never see Europe again. Look at this. That is a terrible goal to concede. And now we have Bournemouth in the Cowboy Cup. It's uh, it's a rotation game. Most certainly not a competition we want to go out and win. We lose 3-1. Okay, that, that is not how I intended to go out. Maybe go a couple of rounds. But the first round, okay, fair enough. We may have drawn to Chelsea. We lost our first game of this series to Bournemouth. But in the Premier League, we're still undefeated. And we are currently in the top four. Imagine come into the season, we are still here in the fourth spot. That would be incredible. But Brighton now, a very tough game. And it's a 2-2 draw. So the undefeated run continues. Tillemans and Bailey for us. Now back to Europe. The rotated squad. 3-1 with Macau Cow with a brace. He scores again. And Buendia. Hey, what? We are noticing the good four. Four games played. Three goals. This guy's 18 years old. And the good performances are being noticed. Now, Wolverhampton. This, of course, is a big rivalry. And we fully expect to win. A slight change at the back at centre back. A 3 0 win. Bailey with a brace and Maddie Cash. Now, Macau Cow comes Smith is saying, boss, I've been scoring a lot of goals recently. When given the opportunity to play, can you please start me in a Premier League game? I promise I'll deliver. I respond saying, our next game is West Ham. Watkins will definitely be playing in the side. But sure, you've been playing well. I'll try to find a way to get you in. And this is going to be quite challenging because Mikel Co can't really play out on the wing. He's got 81 pace, 81 dribbling. So I guess we could possibly play him on the right. He gets a plus two. But Diaby's playing there. That's his position. Wapkins down the middle. Bailey's been scoring goals, so he's on the left. To be fair, Wapkins in the past has been able to play on the left. He doesn't get a boost rating there, so we'll play him down the middle, and I'm going to risk it. Macau Cow, if you really want to play, you're going to have to do something on the left-hand side. And to help him out, we're going to tell this guy to cut inside, get in behind. I'm pretty sure I haven't set any instructions for any players so far for this squad. What am I doing? Oh, no. Early opportunity, West Ham. That could be a goal. Yep, that is a goal. We can slide in and block it. Is that Tammy Abraham? That's Tammy Abraham. That is a very good signing. Oh, West Ham have been good so far. Far. This could be our first defeat of the season. But this will not be our first defeat of the season. It's all about the mentality. Oh, but look at this. Look at this. What a chance. Macau Cow. He said he'd score. Oh, what an equalizer. It's our number nine. It's Macau Cow. He could very well be getting a place in the side because he seems to be doing all right on the left. We have that equalizer. We want to get the winner now. Macau Cow making the run. Ball there, too sure. Now in behind, Macau Cow, the touch, the finish! Oh, what a goal! It's 2-1. It's his second goal of the game. This guy really said that he would score the goals, and he's doing just that. And that is full time. A 2-1 win, Villa. Definitely in dramatic fashion. So most certainly after that, I bring Macau Cow to my office, and I say congratulations, sir. What a performance that was. Two goals. You most certainly won us that game. He replied saying, boss, I normally play down the middle, but I found I played so well on the left that I felt so comfortable. It was natural. And most importantly, I was confident. I knew I knew I was going to score and win that game. I respond said, if you keep this up, you most certainly will have that left-hand side. Now, we have Sauda Vigo. This is the challenging game in the Conference League. And Macauco will be playing again here because he's playing down the middle. We're playing our rotated squad. And I'm expecting him to score again. Here's John McGinn on the ball. Now we've got Zaniola. That's a run in behind. Former cow cow takes it down nicely in the box. I tell you what, that is great play from him. He could have got himself an assist. Oh, here's a breakaway attack. Look at this. Jacob Ramsey in behind on the left. This is a good chance. Fantastic. Can he finish it? Nice. Smashes it. What a save. Now Douglas Lewis there. Oh, Diaby's making a great run. Here he is out wide. Can he finish it? Yes, he can. Yeah, he's not going to miss that one. He had plenty of time. He's, he could get it on his strong foot, his left foot. That is 1-0 Villa. And that is full time. Just the 1-0 win. Now, the club owner comes to me saying, HRS, you've done so well at the start of this season. We couldn't be any happier. We thought it was a very hard job to replace Emery. And of course, so far, it's only early on. But you're doing a very good job. You're on the right track. And I reply saying, thank you. You definitely did appoint the right man. Now, this will impress them. We're playing Luton Town, and there's not a chance we lose that. 2 0, Tillemans and Carlos. Ooh, look at this. Liverpool, 24.2 million for 
Buendir. Now, this guy does play when we rotate and scores now and then. I have said in the past for our last episode, 35 million, he can go. But I'm not even going to negotiate. I'm going to reject that. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Okay, we're getting a lot of transfer offers for him. So maybe he's unhappy and put in a transfer request. If so, we really need to do better to rotate our players. Where is he? He's here. Oh, he's very unhappy. Playtime. So we might actually have to sell him. And that's something we could do in January. Okay, we have Forrest here. And we're going to play Macau Cow on the left. We should be doing that anyway. Because we did say we would. Forrest, they've got two points so far. It's a nil-nil. Are you having a laugh? We're now south of Vigo. Fully rotated side. 2-1 win. There we go. We are smashing this group. We're definitely through. Now in a Milan coming in for Gwendia. I guess we could negotiate again. If we could get 35 million for him, that'd be amazing. Financially, of course, so far, we are doing very, very well. Okay, they, they just go to 24. If we get over 30, we'd probably do well. So 33 million. See what they say to that. 29, we're getting close. I mean, if he really wants to go, then we'll do well to get over 30 million because his valuation will go down. We disagree with 32. Are you serious? Fulham at home now and another draw. Again, we could be winning. We are still undefeated, by the way. Why are we not winning this? We are the only team left who is undefeated. Six wins, six draws in 12 games. If we're to lose a game and win the next game, we may actually get more points. Now, buy Munich coming in for Buende. So, we, we know the price. 32 and a half million. See what they say to that? They say no! Now, Buende comes to me saying, boss, I'm putting in a transfer request. I want out. You're not playing me. I reply saying, well, I do play you in rotated games, but is there any way you can stay and I put you in the 11 more in bigger games? He says, no, I'm putting in a transfer request. As I said, I want out. I say, okay, if there's nothing I can do to change in mind, then I'll put you on the transfer list, which does mean his valuation will go down. We'll have to sell him under 30 million. We now have Spurs. And is there any way we can get Macau Cow on the side? There is on the left hand side. This guy plays so well there. Undefeated still, of course. And yeah, this is a very tough game. Spurs at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Diaby so far has turned players inside out. Smash it from this angle. There is no way to pass it. But he's not very good at finishing from there anyway. But I'm expecting Spurs to show up here and put in a good performance. So if we want to get a point, we want to get three points. We're going to have to be on top of our game. Who's Kulosevsky? Ball to the right back there. Oh, or midfielder. Bentenka. Nice pass. Here is Richarlison. Oh, we have a history with him. Nice save by Tinez. His son on the left-hand side. We need options. Diaby making a run. Watkins, we slot that there to McGinn. We look for Watkins. How's his touch? He's done nope. well. Couldn't move it on. Ooh, and Doji. Three shots so far for Spurs. And we haven't really done anything. We had that chance with Diaby right at the start. We need to just change something up. Here's Kamara out wide there for Diaby. We get the ball to this guy so much because he's so good. Tillman's coming forward. Watkins looking for McGinn, the block. Oh, what a tackle there, Shaw. Right before the break. Here's Macalco on the ball. Big chance. Still got the ball. He could maybe put it in the box. Go look for that pass. Diaby. Oh, the save. That would have been a great assist there for Macau Cow. We're going to get this in the box. Whipped in. Carlos with that up. Just before the break. In fact, four minutes played over what we should have. We go in the lead. Fantastic corner routine. Fantastic header by Diego Carlos. Villa are leading. Oh, Diaby. So much space. Oh, what a ball out wide there. Macau Cow. Onto that right foot. Going to find Watkins. Here is Watkins. It's 2-0. Oh, this Aston Villa side is just better than real life. I'm telling you. We're, we're something else. We're doing even better. HRS is better than Emery. But seriously, how are we playing this well? That's a nice run there, Macau Cow. Oh, he's done well. Oh, he's sliding in. Yeah, that, that is a great way to get a red card as an attacker. If Spurs want to get anything from this game, they're going to have to score here. Oh, they do score here. Oh, dear me. Number 36. It's Velez, the backup striker. That is a dreadful goal to concede there. It is game on. 2-1. Five minutes to play. Look at this pace out wide. Look at this space here for Diaby. Fake shot onto the left. Tries to bend it. Kamara, nope. the touch. Oh, what are we doing? It's on. Richarlison, not this guy. Hits it. Save Martinez. Corner. Is the keeper in the box? Yes, he is. Hugo Lloris is in the box. They whip it in. We get the ball away. Well, we should do. There we go. McGinn 
Blow the whistle. Oh, we just about get a win there at the end. Three points again in the bag. Oh, wow. Barcelona now come in for Buentia. Okay, 30 million. Can we get 30 million for him? He wants to go. I put him on the transfer list. 30 million. Will they say yes? I tell you what, his valuation has gone down even more since the transfer request. I'm going to say 28. If you guys give us that, I'd be happy. We, we say yes. Back to the Conference League, though. AZ Outman now. And yeah, Puente will not be playing this one. Or will he? Because January is around four weeks away. Do we completely bench him? I say we do. It would happen in real life. Do you know what? Let's play this guy. This guy can play camp. He's 60 overall. His lucky day has happened. He's in the Villa side. Don't lose. 2-0. There we go. What was his match rating? That's my question. It was a 7.6. I'm guessing he's Kelly, man. It was. 7.6 for this guy. Fair enough. But Bournemouth away now. Back to the Premier League. Another draw in a game where we should be winning. Still undefeated though. And, and we're in December. Hang on a minute. It's December 6th. 14 games played and we still haven't lost. Yes, we've got 7 draws and 7 wins. And we're 7 points away from City who are top of the league. But let's just enjoy this right now. We are undefeated in December. Well, this last though, because we've got City, Arsenal, United. I mean, even a game like Brentford, that's not easy. We most certainly have tough games coming up, but we have 60 million to spend and the January window is right around the corner. And where do you think we need to make a signing? Where could we? The bench, maybe someone goes. I mean, Carlos, he's done very good. He's 30, so at some point we move him on. I'm saying not this season though. But get your suggestions down below, guys, for episode three. The January window will be open. If you guys are enjoying the series, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already. If you guys want to see the Chelsea career mode I'm doing on my second channel, which will be back soon, then click here.